This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. My name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar and I am the Medical Director of the Movement Disorders Program at the Colorado Neurological Institute. This presentation reviews the progression of Parkinson's disease. Over time, there is slow progression of both motor and non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. In fact, in advanced Parkinson's disease, it's not uncommon that non-motor symptoms are the greatest source of disability. We will also review how the underlying pathology slowly progresses. We will then review how symptoms and progression of pathology correlate over time. This figure represents the loss of dopamine producing cells in the brain correlated with the development of non-motor and then motor symptoms. Cell loss generally begins years, even decades, before clinical onset, and motor symptoms generally do not appear until about 50% of dopaminergic neurons have degenerated. In this figure, we can see that the disease can be divided into three phases. A pre-symptomatic phase, a phase in which non-motor symptoms are predominantly present, and then a phase in which motor symptoms become increasingly evident. In the pre-symptomatic phase, loss of cells gradually occurs, but no symptoms are detectable by the patient. There may, however, be subtle non-motor signs. As cell loss begins to accumulate, non-motor symptoms become detectable, such as constipation, loss of smell, changes in mood, and sleep disorders, such as REM sleep behavior disorder. Eventually, there is a progression of dopamine cell loss such that the typical motor symptoms of tremor, bradykinesia, and rigidity are detectable. In the initial phases of the disease, cell loss typically begins in the lower part of the brainstem and gradually spreads upward until there is involvement of the midbrain and substantia nigra, which contains the dopamine-producing cells. Thereafter, it begins to affect the surface or cortical areas of the brain. The severity of cell loss in each given area increases over time. As cell loss becomes increasingly severe, disability slowly develops. There is a significant amount of variation in progression of symptoms and disability from person to person. As a result, it is difficult to predict the rate of progression for any specific patient. However, there are some prognostic features. Individuals who develop symptoms at a later age of onset typically develop more rapid progression of disability. The development of cognitive impairment or dementia is associated with higher risk of nursing home placement and death. Higher levels of uric acid, a byproduct of protein metabolism, have been associated with slower rates of progression. Patients in whom tremor is the predominant symptom have a lower rate of progression of disability. This is because bradykinesia and gait disorders, which contribute to disability more than tremor, develop more slowly in these patients. The Hone and Yar staging system is an older but commonly used method of rating the progression of Parkinson's disease. It was first developed even before the discovery of levodopa. Stage 1 disease is characterized by mild symptoms typically affecting only one side of the body. In this stage, there is no significant disability or impairment of balance. This patient has early Parkinson's disease and demonstrates mildly reduced facial expression. There is mild right hand and right foot resting tremor. He has slight postural and accent tremor. There is mild bradykinesia or slowness in performance of movement affecting the right greater than left side of the body. This is most evident when patients perform rapid alternating movements such as finger tapping or foot tapping. This patient has no difficulty arising from a chair. His gait is near normal with the exception of reduced right arm swing. Stage 2 Parkinson's disease is characterized by symptoms on both sides of the body. There is some degree of disability and gait and posture may be affected, but balance is preserved. This patient demonstrates bilateral features of Parkinsonism. 
He has tremor at rest on both sides of the body, but it is predominant on his right side. He has abnormal posturing or dystonia, especially affecting the right foot and right hand. There is bradykinesia in performing rapid alternating movements such as finger tapping. Both the hands and feet are somewhat slow. He rises from a chair well. He has reduced arm swing when walking. His balance is unaffected, demonstrated by his normal response to a pull test. Stage 3 is characterized by the milestone of balance impairment. Clinically, this is detectable by the development of spontaneous falls or by an inability to maintain balance without falling after a pull test. This patient demonstrates more advanced Parkinson's disease with reduced facial expression. There is asymmetric tremor of both the hands and feet when the patient's at rest. There is some persistent postural tremor, more so than with action. He also has reduction in speed of rapid alternating movements. There is breakdown of the rapid alternating movements in that the movements become lower in amplitude with ongoing repetition. His gait is slow and unsteady. He has a tendency to lose balance spontaneously and leans to one side with respect to his posture. He retropulses and falls and needs to be caught following a pull test. Patients in stage 4 of the Honan-Yar system generally are severely disabled but are still able to walk and stand without assistance. They are usually unable to live alone and are at high risk of falls. They require assistance with day-to-day -day activities and may experience cognitive impairment. Patients in stage 5 are completely dependent and are wheelchair or bed bound. Most of these patients have significant cognitive impairment or frank dementia. Although we do not have a cure or any proven therapy which has been shown to slow the progression of Parkinson's disease, we have many effective treatments. Once some degree of impairment or disability occurs, treatment of symptoms with a variety of anti-Parkinson medications can markedly improve disability and quality of life. As a result, many patients can continue to work and function independently for many years after diagnosis. Treatment with anti-Parkinson medications should typically begin when there is impairment of day-to-day -day activities, social function, or ability to perform one's occupation. Although motor symptoms are a substantial source of disability, in advanced Parkinson's disease, non-motor symptoms become the predominant difficulties. Patients develop increasing difficulty with control of the autonomic system and especially trouble with bladder control or lightheadedness when arising from a chair or bed. Balance progressively becomes worse and an advanced Parkinson's disease tends not to respond to levodopa. This results in frequent falls which may cause injury. Parkinson's disease overall results in a slight reduction in life expectancy. This varies substantially from patient to patient. Life expectancy is longer in patients who do not have cognitive impairment, and also, of course, in younger patients. Levodopa has also been shown to significantly reduce mortality. Although Parkinson's disease itself does not cause death, complications of immobility can cause hospitalization and death. The most common causes of death are trouble with swallowing, resulting in aspiration pneumonia, poor bladder control resulting in urinary infections, and development of blood clots in the leg, which can go up to the lungs, called pulmonary embolism. Poor balance causes falls and complications from fractures are common. As we have reviewed in today's presentation, the progression of Parkinson's disease varies significantly from patient to patient. Long before the diagnosis is made, the underlying pathology has started to progress. 
Unfortunately, we do not have any currently proven therapy which has been shown to slow the progression of the underlying disease, but we have a number of excellent symptomatic therapies with the gold standard, of course, being Sidamet or Levodopa. Because of disease progression, changes in activities of daily living and work may be necessary, especially in the advanced stages of the disease.